To create railings, there is a specific command. The command firstly asks you to select a sequence of lines and arches, or an existing railing, or simply some points, as in our first example. The dialog box provides a help button, displaying an image showing the required values. Let's accept the defaults and create the railing. In the second example, we select a sequence of lines and arches that define the shape of the railing. Note that the selection point identifies the left or right side. As we see in the dialog box, you can proceed along the sequence of individual segments in order to assign different values to the height and possibly to the base. In this case, we want the railing to reach up to 2 meters and then down to 1 meter. Let's see the result in the isometric view. Let's select the railing we've just created because we want to change some options. For example, we don't want to see the approximation edges and we want to also create the 2D plan view. Let's go out with Create and see the changes made in both 2D and 3D view. In the dialog box we have also seen the Save button. As you can see, you can save the generating options in the lines and the arches that define the shape of the railing. Then, to create the desired railing, you just have to use the Create button. Now let's see the gprof command. For example, we want to create a ledge between the first and second floor of the house. In the dialog box, we see the required parameters and the image which explains their meaning. This time the generating contour corresponds to the perimeter of the building. So, let's leave with the perimeter button. Once you select a line of the perimeter wall, the command prompts you to select the profile. It is also important to indicate a point on the profile corresponding to the contour selected earlier. Let's activate the 3D view and remove hidden lines to see the ledge. In the last example, we want to put the gutter around the roof. We decide to indicate the path with points. With the help of the object snap, we select the lower vertices of the roof slabs. In this way, the gutter path is defined. Then we select the profile and the point at lower left. This point corresponds to the gutter path indicated on the roof slabs. Note that this command requires a selection of a closed profile. For this reason, we have defined the shape of the gutter that, even with a small thickness, is a closed form. Let's now see the whole project in a three-dimensional and shaded view.